What is up? It's been a couple days since I took this solar inverter charger off my wall to put on the 240 volt version. Some people wonder why I did that, but it's just these are pretty inexpensive because they're they sell so many of them. Very common, just a single phase 240 volt output, 6200 watt capable. So I got my uh, ductless two heads. That one in the high wall running right now. And I realized if I set the temperature real high and get this return air temperature sensor where it gets a little influence, it'll actually cause it to ramp down a little bit earlier. So it's only 1.87 watt, kilowatts. So I put the return air sensor for that fan coil one. Kind of right here, it's not in the air path, but it's in the area that starts dropping a temperature once cool air is blowing in here. And that way that one will just back off a little bit. Shooting in this room and that, does help this start dropping in the kilowatts. It's 1.86 kilowatts to run both heads right now. Um, this room like 90 in <laughs> the garage is probably a little warmer than that. I just have them set for 86. This is high enough to let me set it. So it's blowing. It's not real strong enough. The fan on auto is kind of blowing a little on the weak side, but it's blowing right on me where I want to work right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Figure this needs cleaning and everything. I want to take it apart and just inspect the inside of it. I want to see if any capacitors look swollen or anything like that. When I first hooked this bad boy up, I tortured the hell out of it. I had the uh, two rotary compressors running off this thing. And then when I had that hodgepodge small ductless, I, sh I scrapped and put a regular single phase rotary in it. And that was kind of cool in this room at first while at the same time I had... A, the other one heating my water that's before I tried to make them both work off of one compressor in one unit and uh, so it would have like one compressor running and then it would like have to start the second one and it did it but it was torturing it because uh, those those uh, rotaries have always been a little funny they were like from used you know, like uh, portable coolers and, and one was I think a window shaker I took one out of so you know there are older more tired compressors <laughs> lived a well long life so they definitely were pulling on this thing pretty good and it just seems like at some point i noticed because this was also powering all the outlets at first in this room here that my one amplifier well it was actually before i put this sony up there but i had like another old akai or whatever all in one stereo that my wife had since she was like younger uh, yeah this the why <laughs> head unit's gone what well, smoked the transformer in it I actually take that back. It popped the fuse on the circuit board. I changed it, and then it popped it and popped the transformer or whatever. I was like, ah, uh, something's up. Anyway, and then I put this in here. I noticed I could hear hum, like the transformer would hum. And other things I've put in with, like, a regular transformer, I've noticed them hum. And I'm like, there's something wrong with the output. And I don't remember if I made a video about it, but I put, you know, a oscilloscope, my little portable, you know, battery-powered one, put my oscilloscope on the output, and the sine wave, it was a sine wave. It wasn't like pulses. It was a sine wave, but there's an artifact just where it crossed over. And if I find where I put a screenshot of that, I'll put it on the screen now. Had a little artifact right where it crosses over. And for some weird reason, that little bit of distortion um, was affecting anything with like a transformer in it. You know, isolation transformer, things like that. So at that point, I kind of took some of my equipment off of that power in, in that room and just put it on my utility power. The, you know, like this car, the stereo and stuff like that. Most electronics now, TVs, computers, they use in their power supplies, all of these power supplies, just rectify the uh, DC power right to a, a primary capacitor, which is going to be your 120 volts would be like about 200 and, or I'm sorry, 170 volts DC. And if you could all take all these same devices and plug them into 240 volts, 250, what do they have over there in Europe? And it'd be like, you know, 300 volts DC on the capacitor. And it's a switch mode power supply from there. That's why almost all of this stuff, if you look at it, the voltage input is not 120. It's like 100 to 240. That one, the writing's kind of small. This one's a lot bigger. Upside down, 100 to 240. All of these are like that. All of them. So all this kind of electronics, don't sweat it. You're, it's just all, you know, rectified to the, into the power supply and then it. Uh, computer power supplies also do the same thing. So it's like you can't, you can put all sorts of pulses into those things. They don't give a shit. So, but inductive motors, stuff like that, 
So that isn't why I initially changed this out. I just wanted a 240 volt one. But getting the new one, it must have a more perfect, you know, sine wave. And then uh, I'm using a step down transformer in there. I showed you guys that's going to my 120 devices, including the 800 watt rotary for my heat pump for the water, heating the water. And that thing just seems like the compressor starts better. So that artifact or whatever glitch, there's like a little glitch in here. So this thing works. That isn't why I changed it because it still generally worked. But since I changed it, I want to just take it apart and take a peek inside there. And take a look at it. Okay, got the cover off. Not as dirty inside as I expected it to be. See, they put this little plastic around here. That one, I think, over there has the same thing. So what it does, it pulls air in here in here and it pulls it these two fans are pulling right across the heat sinks and they're right underneath them so it probably does a pretty good job and i believe this is probably the um charging side for the batteries and this is it could be the other way around maybe this is the charging for the batteries and this is the inverter output i don't know all i know is uh put my hand over here it would get hot over here i think it was over here um whenever we charging the batteries put my hand here and this side was more unblocked so i know i have my little uh j box over there's like right here i put my fan there i put my hand right here and it feel real hot whenever it was uh charging batteries off of this solar input solar input is high voltage lower current and my uh panels i think uh it's like 17 and a half amps or whatever i have worth out there at 330 volts nominal gets up to like 360 high sun when it's unloaded it gets really hot so that comes in here it's got some chokes it's like that just unplugs like those are spades kind of surprised at that and i'm sure what these do is just kind of charge up some capacitors and it pulse charges you know uh probably a buck down into the uh batteries don't know which ones that is and then uh you usually see transformers like this and it's really high frequency um so i kind of would think maybe these are on the output side but i'm not sure there's one over there so the way this one worked is uh we have your 120 volt in which you could do the bypass to 120 out or from the inverter which is probably here i'm guessing so and then your your high voltage high voltage dc from my panels 48 volt battery pack which is then monster cables there and then my 120 in and out so i might just save this for something else in the house i'm thinking of just ordering uh some lithium batteries not a whole lot but just enough just to have just to make this be another backup for upstairs maybe i don't know i still have a 2200 watt um apc um, server rack mount <laughs> battery backup that works really well upstairs but it runs on a bunch of lead acid batteries so i got it like a little server rack case thing upstairs where all our cats are at <laughs> little corner little uh area where our, i have all my my modems and my routers and all that stuff and where the woman put the cat box and some cat towers and everything so that's all back in there and it works so it keeps my uh ups and my my nas server running and all that stuff up there and it, i've never had that thing go dead when the power goes out for hours but i would think of almost maybe replacing that with this but i don't want to be ashamed to take apart and take down that nice <laughs> server rack ups because things awesome and it's heavy as shit it was really heavy to get it up there and put all those batteries up there so i don't want to move it so i thought of maybe putting this in a closet in my bedroom i don't know or maybe just make it just be a separate one, put it back in here and just have it feed a couple outlets in the living room. And like I said, just put, I could put its own batteries in there or I could actually just tap it off of uh, those batteries where it wouldn't be charging it. It would just be a, a pass through and uh, go to battery backup. That's an idea. Oh, and uh, the stereo that's in the, the Denon or whatever stereo in my living room, it hummed off of this too. So I didn't like that. So I hmm, think I might just take power off of this one and run it in there. All right, I couldn't help myself. So hodgepodge some batteries out of the shelf over there. We got 46 volts. 
going in there so it's actually got an output you kind of see go to the division this is an old i mean these, everything's dirty on this this is the old oscilloscope i took out of retirement right there there's the artifact i'm talking about now a little amazon portable oscilloscope you know lcd one was perfect for checking that so it's it is a sine wave it's not a bunch of pulses but you see there's artifact right there a little bit right there isn't that something okay i had to change this up with some resistors so it's able to turn the divisions way down only got like two volts per division now <laughs> 122 volts input from the utility power and let it is definitely distorted there's more just peak to peak distortion is worse than what's coming out my inverters now my whole street almost everybody has <laughs> the solar with the inverters of course i wouldn't be having an effect at night and it is evening time now so i think that's just, just how crappy the sine wave power is coming in Again, that is uh, power from the utility. So now I'm going to switch it back to that one in there. Now we're off that one through its transformer. And but the uh, peak to peak is smoother and it doesn't have too much of the artifacting going across the zero cross. So now. I'll uh, wait for a couple batteries to charge <laughs> so I can get this thing to go on again just long enough to take the reading so we can see it one more time. Okay, I only had the batteries on the charger for a few minutes, so hopefully this thing will run just long enough to get another sine wave out of it. 46 volts. Heard some clicks. Come on. There we go. And there it is. So a little bit of distortion at the top. But this zero cross is the worst of it. But it's not square waves like a, a dirty, you know, crappy inverter is. You know, it's it's a sine wave. It's almost a pure sine wave, but it's not. But it says 5% total harmonic distortion. I don't know if that's <laughs> above or below that rating, but it's not much. But I just notice it when I plug in an, a power amplifier. You know, a dense and a Sony, that old a Y unit, it hummed. It, the transformer, you could hear a hum in it. And you can see it's dead nuts, 120 volts coming out. Pretty good sine wave. Better than what you see coming out of a cheap inverter. And, you know, since I have all this hooked up, I mean, let's just, I got a couple more inverters. Hell, why not? Let's hook some of those up. So let me get this thing cleaned up and we'll check some other inverters for comparisons. <laughs> Got some batteries hooked up down and dirty into this thing. So this is your typical El Cheapo inverter. Ooh, light just went on. There you go. Now that is a non-pure sine wave. 126 volts. Ah, don't even think that's close to 60 hertz because I had more than that. I don't know. We'll, I'll in the in the video. I'll be able to see. But let me go ahead and change that. Yeah, I'll frame rate of this thing and this gonna screw me up but look at the steps to that yeah so there there so it's just uh it's just got a uh where's my thing I'm trying to that might be a little better so it's I'm trying to see where it starts so it starts right here zero it has a time of nothing and it's on off dead band goes negative same thing you know just, you just can't see it too good on this. Yeah. So that's that's what this thing looks like. I'm gonna, I got another one to try out. This one I've had for a while. Magnum Energy Pure Sine Wave Inverter. We'll see. I got this from some guy who had it in his RV. And it's kind of weird to display as blank. That doesn't work. So it's got some issues. But it does power up usually. There it goes. Hmm kind of embarrassed because uh, that is one beautiful sine wave coming out of that magnum energy. That is great. <laughs> I mean, that thing is perfect. It puts what's coming out of my utility power to shame, to absolute shame. And exactly 120 volts. Wow. That's awesome. So 
this thing. I know in this, if you ever trip this thing or whatever, it's really hard to get to reset. But it does work. It's supposed to be a thousand watts, so I don't need to turn it off. The control is kind of screwy in it, but it does work. And what was he even put on this? 97 amp rating on 12 volts. So I mean, it's it's not screwing around. So this one I just kind of keep if you ever go camping or something like that. Almost run a microwave oven on it. It uh, can't like the inrush power above a, a thousand. It doesn't uh, really handle that. But other than that, it works. Works pretty good. Those that have been watching my channel, just so you know. That's my old sacrificial oscilloscope. I always worry about ground loops or whatever, blowing one up. So when I get on high voltage stuff like that, tied to utility power, and this runs off utility power, I don't really mess around with this stuff because I don't have an isolation transformer for it. So this is a nice four channel, nice voltmeter and stuff, but I don't, I don't use them when I start hooking up to stuff that might be hooked up to my utility power or anything remotely close to it. So that's why... I use this one for that, or my rechargeable little handheld from Amazon, which works pretty good. I just didn't feel like going out to the vehicle to go get it. So we use this old one, which hasn't been touched in years. So, all right, I think I'm done now, especially since the timer just ran out and my AC just shut off on me. So I'll we'll wrap it up with that. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And with that, we'll catch you guys later.